Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level Ed Excel um, January 2022 uh, exam. And this question nine is about trig graphs. And it says here, figure four, figure four sorry, shows part of the curve with the equation y equals a times cosine x minus 30 degrees, where a is a constant. It says the point P is a minimum point on the curve and it has co coordinates 30 and negative 3 as shown in figure 4. So those, those are the coordinates of point P, 30 and negative 3. So it looks like it says here, it's a minimum point, so that's the lowest it reaches, negative 3. Write down the value of a. Okay, now, um, for we, we can see that this is a transformation of the cosine curve. This is a transformation of the cosine curve. And um, this is of the form y equals um, something times f of x. For example, we say a times f x minus 30. So the a is something that's multiplying the whole function. Okay, it's multiplying the whole function. So we know that the, the cosine curve, its maximum value is normally 1, and its minimum value is norm, normally negative 1. Now, for this particular curve, the minimum value is negative 3. That means the maximum value is going to be 3. All right. So we can see that A has got something to do with 3. However, is it positive 3 or negative 3? Well, there's two ways to figure that out. We can think about what the cosine curve actually looks like and then compare it to this. So the cosine curve, as it is, looks like the following. This y equals cosine x. It starts from 0, 1. It goes down to 0 at 90. goes down to minus 1 at 180. Then back to 0 at 270. And then back to 1 at 360. So here you have 0, and this is 90 and this is 180, and this is 270, and this is 360. Then it repeats that same pattern again and again, every 360 degrees. So we can see that this curve is, if you think about it, it's like it's been shifted 30 degrees to the right, because that's what this x minus 30 inside has, and that's why this point is over there. And also, it's if you consider this compared to this, it's like it's upside down. All right, so it seems like... If it's upside down, that means it's been reflected in the x-axis. And something that's reflected in the x-axis, okay, you multiply the whole function by negative 1. So it looks like a is equal to negative 3 here. Okay, so write down the value of a. We can say a equals negative 3. Simple as that. That's the answer to part a. Okay, we can write that down straight away. a is negative 3. We can also figure out in another way. We can say, okay... Let's take this coordinate 30 minus 3. And we can know that this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. Let's replace those in this formula. So you have y equals negative 3 equals a, which you have to find, times cosine of x, which is 30 minus 30. Replace the x with 30 and the y with negative 3. So you have negative 3 is equal to a times the cosine of zero degrees and the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one as we know the cosine curve at zero is at one so therefore we can say a is equal to negative three so you can also work this out kind of like using the equation uh, kind of algebraically okay you can work it out thinking about the transformation of the curve which is important and we can think about it also using algebra by just substituting x and y values into there and finding what a is in either case a is a negative three and as it says, write down the value of a, it's kind of like making um, the assumption that you would probably just think about the, the shape of the curve and how it's transformed um, <clears throat> vertically. All right, so now, then it says, the point Q, as shown in figure 4, um, is shown in figure 4, which is over here, and is a maximum point, right, find the coordinates of Q. So again, the way to do that is to think about the cosine curve and how it changes. Okay, the cosine curve. Let's just make a little sketch of it. As we mentioned, it starts at 0, 1. 
and it goes down to zero at, at um, 90 degrees. Then it goes down to 180, then minus one at 180 degrees. Then it goes back to zero at 270 degrees. Then it goes up to one again at 360, and it repeats the same pattern. So 90 and 180 and 270 and 360. Okay, now we know that what's happened here is this, compared to this, this curve has been flipped upside down. This curve is flipped upside down. So the curve that we've just drawn needs to be upside down. And that's the first thing that needs to happen. So it needs to be upside down compared to this. So it's going to go through the same points, but it's going to be upside down. So I'm going to kind of redraw it, but upside down this time. Okay, so I'll draw the same curve, but instead of starting from up here, it's going to start from minus 1. It's going to go down up to 0, then to 1, and then to 0, and down to minus 1. So this is y equals minus cosine x. Okay, my, y equals minus cosine x. All right, and if you put a 3 in front of it, this will be minus 3 and plus 3. Okay, now... We know that this has shifted to the right uh, by 30 degrees because this is f x minus 30. That's a horizontal shift to the right of 30, 0. So this whole thing has shifted to the right 30 degrees. Okay, so we can think about this like as follows. So this angle here is 30. So we know that originally the highest point it reaches here, the first point it reaches here, okay, this would be the highest point it reaches, okay, um, the, the cosine curve, the highest point it reaches when it's upside down like this would be at this point. We mentioned this is 90, this is 180. So this would be 180, okay, plus 30. And the next time it reaches this, this high point, well, it repeats every 360 degrees. So this point is going to be so that's one. That's 210. This is going to be 210 plus 360. Why? Because it repeats that same pattern every 360 degrees. So that's going to be 570 degrees. And then again, it's going to reach its maximum after 360 degrees. So it's 570 plus 360, which is going to be 800, 930 degrees. So the coordinates of Q are going to be 930 and 3, because the highest point it reaches is 3, as we see. All right, so what did we do here? We first figured out that it reaches this high, the cosine curve itself, just the cosine curve itself, it reaches its highest point. If I can, yeah, it reaches its highest point, okay, at... Okay, so first of all, we drew the cosine curve, then we flipped it upside down, and then we stretched it by three units vertically, and then we said, okay, let's see um, what happens to it when you um, shift it. You know, so we know that when you've done all of that, that this is 180 degrees, and when you shift it th uh, 30 degrees to the right, it becomes 210, and then that same position is repeated every 360 degrees. So this is 360 plus another 360, more than 210, which gives you 930 degrees. Okay, so you can think of it as the working, you can say the x value is going to be um, 180 plus 30, and then that you have to add 2 times 360, because it's the second place, it's repeated the same pattern. And that gives you your answer, that's 210 plus 720, which is 930 degrees. Okay, so that's the answer to part B. And that concludes this question, question number nine. It's a pretty short question, actually, but it's quite important for us to understand trig graphs and also transformations of graphs. Um, thank you for watching. Other questions about this uh, or from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear over here. Other questions from trig trigonometry from P1, especially trig graphs, can be found in the playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching. See you soon.